Amen. Please be seated. God bless you. Be seated and God bless you. Hallelujah. Let me start tonight by saying that the end of this journey called Jesus, the end of this journey called faith, the end of this journey called obedience is glory. I'll repeat myself again. The end of this journey that we call Jesus, this pursuit, passionate pursuit to know him, to be like him, to obey him, to live and walk by faith. The end of that journey is the glory of God manifest in the life of the believer. Hallelujah. If you do not know to what end this journey and this pursuit is all about, you will be very wary on the way. The knowledge of the end is what gives you the power to stay and the power to continue. Are we together now? So believers go to church every time they pray, they fast, they study scripture, they walk in obedience as far as whatever instructions they are given is concerned. They give, they worship, they do everything they are told to do. But it's important for you to know that the end of it is not just to satisfy a religious process or a religious program. That God is on a journey with every believer and that includes you. And that he has pre-informed us ahead that no matter how long that journey seems, the end of it, I repeat, is glory. And I have taught you that the glory of God is a holistic capture of everything that makes God God. His wisdom, his power, his grace. So any believer who begins a journey with God, you may not see what you are becoming through the prayers. You may not see what you are becoming through the regular fellowship. You may not see what you are becoming through the sacrificial giving. You may not see what you are becoming through the confession of the word, through prayer, through fasting, through the inconvenience that you subject yourself to. But we are comforted in Romans 8.18. It says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. There is a measure of God's glory as an assignment that every believer should capture and reveal within his lifetime. I like this. So as ordinary as we are, when we begin this journey in the spirit with the Holy Ghost, you are motivated by the fact that one day, as I walk in keeping with the truth, I will turn back and my life will become nothing short of the manifestation of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So when you have to pray, you pray with this understanding. First, that you love Jesus, but then that you are on a journey that has an end. The end there does not mean full stop. The end means a realm a season where you begin to see the fruit of all your spiritual sacrifices the bible says every activity that we do is likened to sowing and that there are two kinds of soils the spirit as a soil and the flesh as a soil are we bible students that you can sow to the flesh and you will still reap because the soil the the flesh is fertile also but that you will reap corruption limitation in all its ramifications and then you can sow to the spirit and then he says you reap life everlasting so every time you are praying you are sowing fasting you are sowing giving you are sowing are we together being diligent as far as being in the house of god is concerned you are sowing following online you are sowing listening to the teachings again you are sowing praying while others are sleeping you are sowing everybody's a farmer you are not given the liberty to choose whether or not you are a farmer you are a farmer at every point of your life and your faith adventure but the bible says it is within your power to choose what kind of soil you sow 
many sadly have sown and are sowing to the flesh and they are programming seasons of limitations of all sorts but the bible says that he that soweth to the spirit so the moments that you spend week in week out you may not see anything changing physically but my bible your bible says that you are sowing Ladies and gentlemen, find comfort tonight. You are sowing. Every farmer endures. There are plants that will take years before they yield. Am I right on that? There are plants that within maybe a few weeks, a month, two, 90 days max, they've already produced. But there are certain giant trees that you will keep watering, you will keep pruning, sometimes to your frustration. But yours is to be patient because when it begins to yield, after 60 years, a hundred years, it is still standing. This looks like the kind of destiny someone is building in this place. You are watering every week. Watering every week. Watering every week in fastings, in prayer, in study of the word, in giving, in sacrifice. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the spirit of God is doing something. For someone, it may even be your church. You do not even know all the while, while you are seated here, that one day you will be such a great man of God. But God keeps telling you, keep coming, keep building. This is beyond loyalty to a ministry. This is beyond membership. This is destiny. Let me repeat myself. Now you will understand better that the end of this journey called Jesus the end of this journey called faith, the end of this journey called obedience is glory. Say glory. glory. One more time, say glory. As loud as you can, say glory. glory. This is what God is breathing through your life. The glory of God is a capture of everything that is contained in God and can be revealed through the saints. His wealth is his glory. His wisdom is his glory. His goodness is his glory. His power is his glory. Are we together now? Yes. So show me a believer who has chosen with understanding to be a sower and to sow to the spirit. No matter what is around that believer right now, listen to me, the end of it, you will be making a big mistake if you laugh and mock at that believer. Because when you see the kind of bumper harvest that comes, and how many of you know that the soil of the spirit will always produce in an accelerated dimension? So one day, the ordinary gentleman coming week in, week out, sitting, praying, fasting, building, receiving instructions in righteousness. One service you will come like any other service, not knowing that the fullness of time has come for you. Not for everybody. The Bible says now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there are seasons that fully come. And it differs from person to person. You may come sitting quietly. I came for Koinonia and that day, the mantle, the grace, the anointing for your destiny. It arrived church before you and was waiting, hovering around from place to place. Suddenly it finds you. And from that meeting, all that is seen through your life is a measure of glory that you yourself cannot explain. You come to church an ordinary person and leave a prophet fully formed by the Spirit. You come to church as an ordinary person, but live with a mysterious healing anointing that begins to announce you to the nations. You come as an ordinary person. Finally, that grace for kingdom wealth and abundance lands upon your life. Listen, that is why it is dangerous when men miss their days of visitation because it is not given to you to know the exact day. We are mandated to be faithful. Hallelujah. Yeah. Faithfulness is that quality that helps you to continue even when you have not seen the result. Knowing that God is not a man that you should lie. Not the son of man that he should. It reminds me many years ago, I think one of our crusades that we had, small crusade, and on the first day, if I recall, there was a particular lady or so, woman, who wanted to be healed. And sadly, she was not healed that first day. And my people then, they tried, prayed over the person and nothing exactly happened. And I think it was by the second day or the final day of the crusade, that woman got healed. 
now if she had turned after the first day and said well that's all right she would have missed that opportunity are we together i'm saying this so that your heart will be convinced that i am not wasting my time when i'm in the presence of god this is something believers must be mentored into understanding because when people come to church most times they either come to see the man of god or they come sometimes just for the ceremony or they come because they are workers or they come because they are loyal to the ministry none of these reasons are wrong in themselves except that that is too small a reason for the kind of commitment you are investing in your destiny it must be number one that you love the lord jesus but number two you know i am a sower you are tired from the office and you still have to come to church for hours. I am a sower. I am a sower. I'm sowing to the spirit. I'm sowing so that my children will reap what I had no opportunity of reaping. I am a sower. Oh, you come in and the auditorium is already full. It doesn't matter the overflow or outside. I will still sit and be diligent. I am a sower. I reject offense. I am a sower. I am here to serve the Lord. I am a sower condition favorable or otherwise i am a sower when this becomes your mentality you will maximize when you come to church versus someone who comes to church and is careless spiritually and physically that kind of person will only share the grace and go back either ways you are still a sower except that you may not know what you are sowing until you see an ugly harvest rising and god tells you god cannot be mocked whatsoever a man sows. Are we together? Yeah. Whatsoever a man soweth. The assignment of the man of God is to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit and hand you superior quality seeds because the sower soweth the seed and the Bible says that seed is the word of God. So as I bring you the word of God in season, among the many things I'm doing is that I'm handing you the seed that you will sow you will do the sowing are we together yeah. and there are people who sow seeds and throw it on any kind of soil and it does not produce and others are meticulous they receive the seed with every sense of preciousness knowing that this seed I have now can grow to become a giant oak tree that I will eat from and those who come after me can eat from please lay your hands on your head and cry for the spirit of discernment Lord I am here as a sower grant me the grace to receive precious seed and to sow it with wisdom that I will sow to the spirit so that I will of the spirit reap life everlasting someone is praying the grace to participate in every aspect of the service remaining in prayer in listening in receiving by faith I receive seed I receive seed rebuke the spirit of distraction rebuke the spirit of slumber rebuke distractions of all sorts that when the word comes i give it rapt attention knowing that my destiny and indeed the destiny of those connected to me depends on the truth that i receive hallelujah praise the name of the lord amen thank you and you see the interesting thing is that in the presence of god one of the assignments of the Holy Spirit as touching the ministry of the word is to breathe upon your faculty. Listen, so that you are able to understand the truth that is communicated regardless your level of education, regardless your level of intellectual exposure. That means if you did not have the, the opportunity to be enlightened in terms of the way to broaden your faculty of understanding you should not be punished because of that limitation so the holy spirit grants something called utterance utterance is not oratory oratory is your own labor as a man of god 
to learn to use words to transfer thoughts effectively and I've taught you that effective communication enhances the understanding of the people but there is a spiritual quality given to men called utterance the ability to make everyone see and understand what you are saying it is utterance that is responsible for inventing the examples that suddenly come out of your spirit it is utterance that is responsible for helping you communicate the truth sometimes it manifests as a song sometimes it manifests as a repetition of the points sometimes it manifests as an example that suddenly someone who may not be as literate just nods and said I finally got it that one is not creativity it is utterance and it is a gift and the assignment of that grace according to Ephesians 3 and verse 9 is to make all men see it can open the eyes of men so that they see and they understand hallelujah praise the name of the Lord the Lord has been challenging me and putting a very strong burden in my heart and among the end time strategies that God is revealing as a prophetic blueprint to his body please listen there are three areas that I've heard the Lord repeatedly drum in my spirit that the saints need to rise to a higher level of understanding of number one is dominion over unclean spirits this is an aspect of the faith life that in truth believers have not yet had a thorough understanding as to the spiritual dynamics that control dominion over unclean spirits oh please let your spirit be open tonight in the name of Jesus Christ dominion over unclean spirits in as much as we confess that this is a fact in Christ and I'm coming there shortly most believers experientially are yet to walk in that reality dominion over unclean spirits number two dominion over sickness and disease this is the second area the Spirit of God has been drumming into my spirit it's like there is a unique grace that is being released over the body of Christ to bring men and women into a higher understanding empowerment to manifest dominion in this area dominion over sickness and disease hallelujah the rate of people who get healed whether medically or supernaturally with respect to those who have been or relative to those who have been oppressed by Satan is very small the Spirit of God wants to to close that margin are we together now there should not be hundred people suffering from sicknesses cancer like we prayed over or some demonic thing and then you'd have just one testimony whereas the remaining people it does not look like victory the character of victory is that it always dominates are we together now yeah dominion over sickness and disease number three the third area that the Spirit of God has been putting a strong emphasis and this is for the body of Christ is dominion over resources these three areas dominion over resources that if you must survive the end times with all the onslaughts that the devil is bringing upon the nations it is important for us to be reoriented re-educated to understand in truth from scripture and completely so the dynamics that govern dominion over unclean spirits dominion over sicknesses and diseases dominion over resources because these three God revealed to me will be Satan's greatest tool before Jesus returns the attack that is coming on the body of Christ will be along these three areas our inability to understand how to establish victory over spirits all kinds of satanic spirits and you'll be learning something powerful shortly 
will keep many families and many people bound in spite of prophetic words, prophetic confessions, fastings and prayer and you'll find out that Satan seeks or seems to be gaining dominance even over the lives of believers. And then number two is the body of believers. The greatest way that God is mocked in the life of the believer is when he is alive and begins to deteriorate in the presence of everybody. It is an indictment on the love of God, the character of God, and the power of God. That Satan brings an individual and makes a caricature out of that person and a mysterious sickness is eating your body and has no medical explanation and it even becomes more indicting if that believer loves Jesus. Because you will search for the explanation as to why that person should be in that condition. Everything the person should do to avoid that condition, usually he or she will tell you, I have done it. I've loved the Lord. I've given seeds. And many times when these things happen, as men of God, sometimes we feel embarrassed to admit that we are limited ourselves. So we create all kinds of theological explanations like, I'm sure you don't have faith. I do not agree. I do not agree. It is not always a faith problem. Believe me. There is something we do not know that has not brought us into higher levels of power. And you will be learning something really powerful this night. I'm praying for you that what you will learn tonight will help you to put every demonic spirit, every manifestation of darkness that has plagued you hitherto, that you will not only do it for your sake, but you will do it for the sake of everyone around you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. If you were to do a TV interview for me and you ask me, Joshua Selman, what do you think is the major problem of the average believer today? My response to that question will be number one. I think, and I wrote it here, that the believer does not have a thorough understanding of the fundamentals of redemption holistically presented the first problem of the average believer is not zeal it's not passion there is a very severe bankruptcy of a thorough understanding of the fundamentals of redemption hallelujah there is not just there is a way God should be known but there is also a way a believer should grow and look at me please it is a dangerous thing to start helping a believer in his faith journey and then all you introduce him to is responsibility it is dangerous the foundation of the believers work is not an awareness of his responsibility the foundation of the believers work is what Christ has done and until the believer understands Christ that way he will keep seeing God as a selfish self-centered God who is only out to save so he can use and that narrative about God is not proper. And from that narrative will come all kinds of weaknesses. People who have exerted power and dominion in the body of Christ, past and present, are people whose foundation was properly laid. Are we together now? And the foundation was having a thorough understanding of the fundamentals of redemption. Everything that captures Jesus, his coming, his earth walk, the significance of his death, the significance of his burial, his resurrection, his ascension and enthronement and what that means to the believer today, what the believer has now become in light of that reality. You will never be able to rise to become a champion in the kingdom if that is not the foundation of your understanding. It matters at what point in your life you learn that truth. So there are many people who their first approach to the knowledge of the things of the spirit is warfare. So their concept of warfare with all due respect is already a journey that will end up in repeatable, recyclable defeats. Because the basis upon which that warfare should be administered was not even known in the first place. 
So it becomes an endless journey of boxing Satan and watch if he will reply. And then I box him again. How many did you give him? Two. How many did he reply? Five. Oh, you need to step up. So that narrative produces weak believers. Praying from the lens of weakness. Fasting from the lens of weakness. Confessing the word from the lens of weakness. Is someone learning already? Then on the other hand, you have people who have these fundamentals but then in addition to these fundamentals unfortunately they remain at that level and so they keep seeing all the things that the word of god says are finished and have been credited to the believers account but never walk in the reality of any of them it is more frustrating to know what should be and not have the power to make it manifest so you hear a lot of confession in church. In Jesus' name, I can't be sick. In Jesus' name, I can't be poor. But then you are seeing the life of that person confessing daily and progressively tending toward what he says he's not. And then, you know, we preachers sometimes say, just continue. Just you keep, don't worry about what is happening. And the person says, are you joking? I'm going through pain and you say, I should not worry about it. One day I have to worry about it and say, what is wrong? Many people continued like that till they died. Others continued till they failed. Others continued till they backslid. Others continued till they insulted God and walked out of the Christian faith. And became advocates through their anger that don't mind this church thing. These guys are just a bunch of, of liars who want to manipulate members to get gain. It matters how your spiritual understanding is constructed so back to my interview you ask me the question what is the challenge with the average believer my first response is that there is a bankruptcy of a thorough understanding of the fundamentals of redemption and let me tell you the truth um i think for the average believer in our generation we had our understanding about what we call redemption realities from largely and with all due respect what we call the word of faith movement in partnership with the charismatic movement because of their inclination to the word and the ministry of the holy spirit so the average believer had his understanding about redemption realities from the lens of those who came from this movement and they taught many powerful and wonderful things fathers like Kenneth He again, T.L. Osborne, and these great men, they demonstrated that they understood what they knew. But let me tell you the truth. God remains constant, but his system of upgrading men to light is progressive. That means every generation should see clearer and farther than the previous generation. It becomes an embarrassment if the fathers see greater than us. It means we are not growing because they have, we have the advantage of their scars and their shoulders to climb upon plus the advantage of the Holy Spirit. We should be able to see something they did not see as clear. And one of the major issues with the revelation of redemption realities as we have in the body of Christ is that there is a thorough on the misunderstanding of the believer's authority in Christ. I have studied materials again and again as to the understanding of the believer's authority. Most believers are just blindly mentored that we have authority in Christ and that is true. We are like Christ and that is true. We are gods and that is true. And most believers stop there but it is a random thought that is just emotionally received. Most people do not even understand what that statement means. What does it mean to have or to be in authority? Question two, what is the jurisdiction of the authority? What is Satan allowed to do and what is he not allowed to do? What can the believer do and what can the believer not do? For instance, when the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. Or number two, the Bible says we are partakers of his divine nature. Do you know what that means? I have taught you here, but for the sake of this, this topic we're dealing with now, it is not everything God has and God is that he gave man. 
are we together when the bible calls us partakers of his divine nature that is a fact but it is not every part of god that he gave man there are certain dimensions of god that he did not share with man these are the dimensions of God that brands him exclusive to himself. For instance, the quality of omniscience, the ability to know all things, God did not give man. Number two, omnipresence, the ability to be everywhere at the same time. That is a dimension of God he did not give man. Are we together? Number three, omnipotence. Man is not all powerful. Our authority in the kingdom is not absolute. It is derived. It's a product of a relationship and it can be lost. So when a believer exercises authority in the kingdom, it's not something that was invented outside of God's participation. It is a product of your relationship, a flow that comes from him to you. Are we together now? Yes. So you see, when the Bible tells us that we are partakers of his divine nature, if the believer is not educated to understand the full implication, you will start doing a lot of heretic practices that will only leave you confused yourself and then to confuse others. The fact that we are partakers of his divine nature or one with Christ or seated with Christ, the word seated with Christ here is a spiritual reality, but is also a, is just a, a way, a graphic representation of how one we have become with him. Are we together now? Yeah. So if you ask the average believer, you are seated with Christ, he will say, yes, you have authority. Yes, over thrones, dominions, every name that is named, yes. But now to manifest that authority becomes a serious problem. How then do I walk in the reality of that power, that authority in experience? Number two, <laughs> Satan. Let's talk about Satan in one minute. What? No, don't write, just listen. what kind and what level of authority did god give man over satan what are you allowed to do to satan and what are you not allowed to do to satan i hope you know that you cannot do everything hmm. listen this is why most believers don't have results the concept of the authority of the believer has jurisdictions and it has rules of engagement. Just because you have authority does not mean you say everything and the realm of the spirit respects it. There is a rule of engagement. If you do not understand this, your spiritual labor will be futile and you will never, never be able to walk in power. I give you an instance. There is nowhere in scripture where you have authority as a believer to gather all the demons on earth in one place and chain them and hinder their operations indefinitely. That provision is not given the believer. Do you know why? Because there is a level of liberty that Satan has. There is an allotment of time. His final judgment has not yet been meted out. It's in the Bible. Even the demons had this. Remember the madman in Gadara? Matthew's account when there were two madmen who came, they said, have you come to destroy us before our time they were talking to jesus you are obedient to prophecy there is a timing to it when jesus walked upon the earth there were things he did with satan there were things he did with demons but there were things he did not do and jesus came as a pattern man to help the believer to know how to exercise authority in a profitable way the number one law for exercising authority is the knowledge of jurisdiction you need to know what is the jurisdiction of my authority. Is someone learning tonight? So for instance, in scripture, believers are given power over unclean spirits. Believers are given power against unclean spirits. What does power over mean? What does power against mean? What can I do with Satan? And what can't I do with Satan? For instance, you cannot destroy Satan. It's not given to you. Of course, now, I know that especially ministries that are inclined to deliverance, they may use words like die or Satan will destroy you. Sometimes you may even hear us preachers say it. We just say it on believing that members know what we mean. Are we together now? But classically speaking, Satan, you are not the one who will destroy Satan. Are we together now? 
there is a judgment that will be meted out by God's divine justice. And when that happens, Satan together with all his cohorts will be judged and destroyed eternally. This is what the Bible teaches. So in the meantime, the believer, you have the authority to number one, withhold the potency of Satan from performing within your life and within a predefined jurisdiction for you. For instance, I can, as an intercessor, ward off the activities of demon spirits over Abuja, over Nigeria. We are given that liberty in Christ through the ministry of prayer, standing upon the authority that is in Christ. Because remember, he says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go with that consciousness that the jurisdiction of your authority is right from the second heavens down to the earth. Everywhere within that spiritual climate, your authority will work. Another example, you cannot command, I know we do that, you cannot command any being aside from angels in heaven to respond to you. That liberty is not given to you. You cannot get up and command the four living creatures, command the 24 elders to do anything for you. Are you seeing that now? They can move, they can walk, but that is not within the jurisdiction. The authority of the believer is over spirits and the spirits are defined. Unclean spirits, angelic forces, and it is not even to command. It's to make decrees and they have been mandated to back you. They don't follow you, they follow the word of God. So it makes it look like they are obeying you, but they are not slaves. Are we together now? Yes. They are not slaves. They bring performance to the world. So they are not there to foil your lust. Angels, beat this person because I am angry. No, they are not stupid. Once it is not consistent with the will of God, they don't have an assignment to obey it. Are we together now? Is someone learning now? So the average believer does not have a thorough understanding of authority. So you have, because of this inaccurate understanding, there have been many variations in terms of exercising authority. There are those who believe that once you speak once, Satan has heard it forever. And that understanding is based on the fact that, okay, if I declare he heard me, he will never hear me again. There are those who now respond to such call and say, you are joking. You will soon learn that you are playing. And then they say, this warfare is continuous. It does not end. What was Satan allowed to do to the believer? And what was he not allowed to do? What is the believer allowed to do in terms of exercising authority over spirits? You, we want to learn authority, you have to examine the life of Jesus because Jesus is the most accurate portrait of God in terms of exercising authority. The prophets and all the people before him and after him because they were men. The Bible never gave a word of approval for them from God. So we know that Jesus came as a pattern man to reveal to the believer how to walk in authority. When you notice that in casting out devils, Jesus never told the spirits where to go to. Only once that he, got, he granted their request because they wanted to enter swine. And he did not say go. He just said go. Every time Jesus casted spirits, he did not define a place for them to go and stay. In fact, if Jesus said anything, he gave us intelligence that spirits have the liberty of mobility. Mobility from any place back to the vessel that they came out from. That when a spirit is casted out of a man, is that in your Bible? That he goes through dry regions and not finding a place, he will say, let me go back to my house. And if he finds it swept and clean but empty, he will get seven other spirits more deadly than itself and return back so that the latter part of that man's life, no wonder you can find people who receive miracles. And then after a while, they go back and their conditions become worse. Jesus gave us an explanation because I have taught you that deliverance does not end by just casting out the spirit influence. When the spirit influence leaves, that is step one. The second phase of deliverance is that the light of God's word must come to give the person a now superior spiritual orientation. And by so doing it to close that door. And then the third dimension of deliverance is called the discipline of conformity, where you now have the responsibility of cooperating with the word 
to walk in light with the things and the practices that keep Satan at bay. Are we learning now? So the average believer, I can tell you in church, is zealous, loves God, is sincere. But many people may never rise to God's standard, that prophetic potential, because we have not learned properly the fundamentals of redemption. We have a head knowledge. We have a theological knowledge. We can recite what Jesus did. But an understanding of how to convert that reality to become our experience, many believers are at a loss. So we have people who command angels anyhow. I command these angels, do this and that and that. And sometimes, you know, just because we are given authority and angels minister to the saints, there is a modus operandi. Are we together? There are those who even command God and then mistakenly we use the scripture that says, as touching the works of my hand, command ye me. Those things were just error in translation. You cannot command God. No. When I was teaching you, um, let them have dominion. I taught you that when people say God himself is limited until we authorize him, uh, they are sincere, but it's not an accurate spiritual understanding. What we do is not to command God. What we do is to partner with him. You think partnership, not authority over God. Are we together? So I cannot command God because he made me ruler in the earth. No. When God limits his operation until my participation, it is not because he is weak. It's that he has designed a system to incorporate me every time he's functioning on the earth. It's not a product of weakness. Of weakness. It is his wisdom designed to make sure that I participate in that dominion process. But that if God decides to bypass me, he's still just because the earth is still his own. You see that now? So he says, if you will not praise me, it is not the usual rule, but I can raise up stones. Literally and prophetically, I can raise up stones to praise me. Is someone learning now? So the average believer needs, listen, if you want to build a believer to be a person of stature, he needs to come into an understanding of what Jesus has done. When you tell somebody that while you were yet a sinner, unable to help yourself, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel that Jesus saw you he loved you and he came to you not demanding that you give him his life because of the threat for hell he loves you and he's given you an opportunity to be a partaker of his life and the only thing you have to do is to believe that he loved you enough and died for you and that in saying yes to him among the many things that happen to you is that there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. Now you have been vested with life eternal alongside authority. The potential to manifest the God life has now been given to you. That is why the gospel is called good news. Hallelujah. Now the person can say, you mean with all this my life of drinking, smoking, all this my life of drugs, all this my life of killing and destruction, Jesus can love someone like me? You say yes. Step one, when you bring such a person, now the danger is if that is the only theology that remains with that person, there is trouble because the next assignment is to know that now you are, we are not saved by good works, but we are saved unto good works. That when you now become a believer in Christ, the next thing is that you will begin to understand that there is the partnership with the word and the spirit to conform to the image of the Christ in experience. Are we together now? And then that eternal life that has been transmuted into your spirit cannot manifest just arbitrarily. It's a product of knowledge, understanding and faith. Now you are taught the ways of God. The believer now walks in the appreciation of what Jesus has done, but also rises to a point of responsibility, knowing that I need to not add to what God has done, but partner with what God has done to make it manifest. So sometimes with all due respect, we say things like, if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Of course, I know that those who say that are very well intentioned and they are sincere. But from the lens of scripture, that is not an accurate statement. How many times have you believed what God has said and agreed with it and confessed it and it did not work? Because it takes more than that. 
the entire journey of obedience is beyond the realm of confession confession is part of the process but obedience is predicated on understanding number one you need to know the provisions that have been there number two you need to know the conditions allocated for those promises to be made manifest and then you need to obtain grace from God to walk in keeping with those conditions that is what is responsible for manifestation hallelujah so I can know that Jesus died defeated Satan death hell and the grave I can know that for a fact but ladies and gentlemen I can know that I've been translated from every curse and I can even stand to declare in the name of Jesus there is no curse upon my life in the name of Jesus oh my grandfather worshiped this my grandmother worshiped this in the name of Jesus I am free from it and yet after all of that confession it looks like Satan is just watching you and say just finish and get out of the way for me and then you find out that there are many people who would tell you apostle I'm fasting and praying and in the midst of the fasting and prayer I still see demons come to oppress me you see that and sometimes we men of God are at a loss as to why you know what should have caused that now and we say just go you are not serious with God that's why it's not true it's not true that person is very serious with God that's even why Satan is oppressing the person hallelujah I'm saying that because it's happening to many of us and sometimes we come to church and we just say amen but we live back with our various questions and our frustrations and sooner or later the believer will become discouraged and say you know what I love the Lord I will still keep doing church but I will really go and find a solution that befits my problem It's why there is a mix of the Christian faith and many other extra biblical practices today and then we say things like the word of God works and that is so true but the average believer has not experienced perpetually the victory that is in Christ if we are to be honest and we are to admit it a few people may have received like trickles of rain a few testimonies here and there but most believers are yet to walk in the experience of this abundant life the experience of this victory in Christ the average believer does not have the confidence to be able to reproduce the victory in Christ here and now it's like if it happens let it happen so we pray for instance and we say father give me a job change my life do this and that if it so happens we say wow it happened if it does not happen after all we knew it would not happen the fundamentals of redemption it is true that you and I have authority over Satan but it's important for us to understand the jurisdiction of authority and how to exercise that authority and the Lord placed it in my heart that the end time church needs to walk in the reality of dominion I repeat over unclean spirits dominion over sicknesses and diseases hallelujah and then dominion over resources this one has plagued many believers resources the inability to be able to have command of the resources it takes to live a decent and a meaningful life and then to be part of God's end time program the greatest attack that will come upon the saints will come in these three areas Satan is fashioning a very dangerous weapon to bring upon the believers that it looks like the devil wants to make a caricature of Christians and to mock them that while we are serving God and rolling on the floor there are spirits that seem to move unhindered destroying families writing negative narratives over our lives hallelujah Elijah got angry because it looked like the silence had emboldened the prophets of Baal and he got angry one day and said you know what we're going to stop being in a straight between if God be God serve him if Baal be God serve him let's go up the mountain let's prove once and for all that the God that answers by fire let that be the God listen I believe with all my heart that the end time church is going to rise with such power and grace you will see a widespread manifestation of dominion can I tell you there is no church as an institution and as a local assembly that demonstrates authority over spirits 
authority over sickness authority over resources that will be empty in this end time because the major problem of men is centered around these three things people will run anywhere they know that they can find solution over curses over spirits over yokes many of you have left your homes to come now it didn't matter to you what sermon you were going to hear your major concern was that I carried this spirit disturbing me. I transported it to Koinonia and let it sit down with me here in hope that someone with the power and the wisdom from God will be able to bring that separation. When someone leaves his home, ladies and gentlemen, and comes and sits down here, and after two, three hours, every curse, every yoke, every pronouncement upon that person gives way, and he returns back home, and the testimonies that follow liberty, testimonies that follow liberty, not assumed stories, not assumed testimonies. By Monday, doors are open as proof that Satan has left you. Tuesday, doors are open. Your loved ones say, what happened? They usually would not listen to you. But now this is a manifestation that is foreign to the history of this family. We've not seen breakthrough like this. A young boy that was, that was missing suddenly returns back home. Hmm. Most people do not understand the publicity power that victory over spirits and victory over sickness and victory over resources can bring to the name of the Lord. Wait until you find a family of 10 people impoverished financially and within one month, one by one, God begins to sign. You know how you sign a register. The sister comes and God opens a door. The brother comes and God opens a door. The one who is a missionary that as though he has been cursed, all kinds of doors open. Have you seen someone who was sick and became healed? Did you not cry? As bold as you are, most people have not seen genuine healing miracles in a consistent way. The way people testify in church, sometimes you are even, it's as if they are not sure themselves. It's almost as if they were saying, just go and say something. Genuine miracles that you watch somebody who came sick with the medical reports. I was very blessed hearing the testimonies. There are notable miracles that you cannot deny. They are proof of the hand of God. Are we together? Ladies and gentlemen, the dominion of the saints must be well represented in the area of dominion over sicknesses and diseases. I've had the honor and the privilege of praying for people. My phone is full of needs. Sometimes I feel guilty because I'm not able to attend to as many needs. And I say, oh God, please keep raising people. The more people are raised, the more some of us can rest. When there are few people, you, you can die prematurely because of the burden that comes. You are sleeping, that's when the time zone somewhere, someone is waking up and you see people sending scripture, apostle, I will not let you rest. I'm like the woman with the issue of blood. You must do this and I'm saying, oh God. Do you know why? Because they perceive that if one word comes from you, they will be healed. Now the question is, will it really happen? Or will you dash their hopes? Many of you have come here now believing probably you were motivated by others to say, look, come on and sit down. One prophetic word and you go back and your life will change. Now you have come and you are sitting. More than the truths I'm teaching, you are aware of the problems that brought you here. And can I tell you the truth? Any man of God who does not respect the pain and the problem of people who come to him will soon be preaching to an empty pew. People have real problems. And when they are pressed, every man's need is his point of contact. It's also his point of attention. When I'm speaking along an area of your need, you suddenly lighten up. Aha, uh -huh, my word is coming. What is he saying now? Hmm. Dominion over unclean spirits. There are many of you who are seated here now. The reason why your loved ones have refused to be saved is that they have watched your life they watch your zeal versus the performance of the word in your life and the gap is too wide to convince them and so every time you tell them i'm going to church they say save johnny 
carry this your burden of religion out of my face let me manage the spirits that i'm dealing with now whether it's through appeasal or occultic manipulation let me just be managing it there but here comes a generation ladies and gentlemen men who will understand this thing with power that we will demonstrate such levels of power dominion over this unclean spirit that it should not take one year to get spirits out of a family it should not take one year for god's sake to rewrite the story of a person one time they showed me they showed me true story i think maybe we may even be a family here they showed me the photo of one of their fathers the legs here i mean the whole thing you could see the bone because i don't know what kind of condition that was i just know it is of the devil i've had the honor of seeing and being part of phenomenal miracles and even as a man of god you will think walking in this dimension for many years will get you used to it every spectacular manifestation of the hand of god leaves everybody including the vessel in awe you stand and you say god what is this what is this a family called me one time a simple prayer for them and this satanic spirit just gave way at my goodness the doors that opened for them now the woman they are in uk she's giving birth next next month i think or something and property they've not been able to and these are people who love god they have served god let me speak over your life in the name of jesus every spirit that followed you here provided this is koinonia and we bear the name of the lord it must let you go now it must let you go now listen sit down please behind the widespread tragedy of men the widespread tragedy of families parents the widespread tragedy around your children be it academic in nature be it health wise be it career wise do not think any sustained problem in your family is void of the participation of spirits the longevity factor behind any problem is because of the presence of spirits hallelujah they will turn a great child with a great destiny to become like a fool in the presence of his parents and the devil will handpick from a very christian family so that he will use that as a message to make it look like serving god does not pay i hope you know that when he does these things it's not just because he's evil that he uses men as a portrait to write a letter to creation that god is not faithful so someone will say this family that loves the lord missionaries serving the purposes of god look at the kind of useless children they build one is a drunkard the other one is a prostitute the other one does not even know what he's doing the other person is this and that is this how god rewards if this is the jesus you are bringing i rather not go and hell says come My apologies sorry about that are we together now yes so you find out that these kinds of things is what satan does in many families do you know that one manifestation of dominion over spirits can bring a whole region to jesus by the time your child that everybody has concluded on that this one will never be saved because when you give him 20 naira, you know what he's going to do with it. When you give him 100 naira, the moment anything is missing in the house, you already know the thief. Not by word of knowledge, but because of the kind of spirit that is at work in that child. You are advising him, he will sit down like this. Are you going to change? Yes. The pastors will even pray. He will kneel down and say amen. And stand up from that place right to go and do exactly what you have said. Because it is not by might. It is not by power. While you were in that meeting, you were dealing with human bodies, but the spirits behind them were also watching you, knowing that you will waste your time. Time does not drive spirits. Anger does not drive spirits. 
Discussion does not drive spirits. Sentiments does not drive spirits. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. Can I tell you, God is speaking to a family. If you do not contend for power over unclean spirits, you will lose your loved ones to Satan. You will lose your loved ones to curses. Don't wait until they kill all your parents, kill all your children, kill all your loved ones. Rise up as a believer that you are and say in the name of Jesus, I have dominion, dominion over unclean spirits. Hallelujah. Dominion over unclean spirits. Listen. There are spirits that are assigned to individuals. There are spirits that are assigned to ministerial offices. They are not assigned to a person. So Apostle Joshua Selman as a ministerial office has a spirit assigned to it. What is the assignment? Destroy this man. Scatter his life. Destroy whatever he represents so that the body of Christ will be affected. That is the assignment. There is a spirit assigned to me because I'm on earth. There is a spirit assigned to your family. Are we together now? There are spirits assigned to regions. As soon as you enter that region, it's like a register in the spirit. This person has arrived. There is a scan in the spirit. What authority level do you have? Nothing. This is just a noise maker, church goer. He's welcome. Join the bandwagon of slaves. So you come into a city, I want to do business in Abuja. I want to do business in Lagos. I'm a graduate. All, all that is a spirit, it's just a talk. From the realm of the spirit, you find out that you lose everything and you don't know what is happening. Listen to what I'm telling you. There are spirits that are assigned to marriages. A husband and a wife who love themselves, as soon as they say I do, the spirits are witnesses. Two weeks later, the man is tired, wants to slap the woman. And you counsel the man and he will sit down and even be counseling others and say, be good to your wife. Be fair to people. And once it's done, you will beat his own wife. It's not that the man is evil. There are spirits. And we keep saying we have authority, but we do not have understanding. When Jesus got into, I hope you know that the spirits in Gadara were the ones who created the storm. When Jesus was on his way coming, they knew that deliverance was coming and they raised a storm. You don't tell a storm, peace be still. No. As soon as Jesus arrived Gadara, nobody told the madman that he had arrived. The spirits knew. They were waiting for him there as soon as he arrived. What have you come to do now? And Jesus said, said do you know what? Let's negotiate. We are responsible for this place. The businesses that prosper in this place are in partnership with us. That is why immediately they left that man. Some people's businesses went down because the businesses were connected to that fraternity. So you step into Abuja and you do not know the age-long spirit. You've been prospering every other place, but bankrupt of spiritual intelligence. And you may sincerely say, well, I'm a child of God. I'm a believer. And you are right. But because you do not understand how to administer authority. Oh, my business starts and your staff will start stealing. Even the most honest person in your company, honest people, they start changing in ways you do not understand. And you are sincere. Sometimes you think the solution is money. You carry one million. Okay, take man of God and drive these demons. And they don't go anywhere. Because you must understand the rules of engagement. And the person goes down. There are cities when you enter, you become poor to look like the city. No matter how blessed you are, there is a spirit that makes men to look like the, the city. There are people who go abroad for 10 years, 20 years. They excel. But it's like a trajectory. They come down when they are 80, 70 years old. They become like they are yesterday. And they will tell you stories. I was once in the White House. I was once, and you are saying, so what happened to you? Hallelujah. There are spirits that are responsible for stunting growth and advancement. So the moment out of a family of 10 people, you suddenly emerge and you are the person rising. 
you don't have to be bad. The fact that in your rising is the salvation of many, here comes the spirits assigned to you. And you just hear that the breadwinner of this family just died in an accident. One mad bike man just came. He did not just come. You are just watching physical things there. There are spirits assigned. I'm saying to someone again, in the name of my God and your God, every spirit that has been assigned to mock God over your life, may it give way right now. 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 Hallelujah. You see, there are many ways to enjoy the authority that immunes you against sickness or against unclean spirits. Number one is your personal understanding. Your personal understanding of the finished work of Christ. It has to be a personal revelation for you. Number two, the advantage of prophetic covering. Listen carefully. I'm showing you the ways that God designed for believers to be immune. Number one is a product of your personal revelation of the finished work of Christ. That means as a personal responsibility, you go to understand the implication of his death, burial, resurrection, how that he defeated Satan, sin, hell, and the grave. He resurrected triumphant, and he's now seated at the right hand of the Father. What that means to you, and then the advantage of prophetic covering. You know the advantage of prophetic covering because everybody will come into this understanding gradually. So prophetic covering was put to midwife your victory while you learn and while you grow. That is why there are people, the moment they become connected to certain visions, even before they come into certain levels of understanding, they enjoy certain privileges. Are we together now? Remember when the blood was put on the lintel of the nation of Israel. It didn't matter the personal belief of the person in the room. Provided there was blood on the lintel, everybody within that room, even if you were an armed robber, you were saved from the angel of death. Hallelujah. Dominion over unclean spirits. I have seen wicked spirits in my vision. I know what they do to families. Sometimes I am pained when I watch the ignorance of believers. They just assume that just because Jesus has died, everything automatically is gone. No, let me show you a scripture. Hebrews chapter 2, please. Give us from verse 6 to verse 9. Hebrews 2. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Please let me have your attention. Or the son of man that thou visitest him. Seven. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. The word yes, Elohim. A little lower than God. Thou crownest him with glory and honor. And did set him over the works of your hands. Read verse 8 with me please. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. Uh -huh. For in that he put all things in subjection under his feet. He left nothing that is not put under his feet. The tragedy is in the last line. Read on please. But now we see not yet all things under him. Just stop there. Are you seeing that now? Paul is the one who was given the privilege of what we call the Pauline epistles. He understood redemption from a standpoint of divine revelation. And Paul is saying in as much as it is true, that in Christ, victory has been accorded every believer. But he says now, experientially, we do not yet see all things under his feet. It is true that no cause should walk in your life. But now, we do not yet see the manifestation of that victory. Because mama is still crying. The young men are still in bondage. The women are still feeding the men in that family. It ought not to be so. Now your assignment as a believer is to number one, regardless your condition, to believe that the truths that have been captured as far as Christ's finished work will not change. Let God be true and all men liars. Then number two, to take the responsibility to know 
that between prophecy and manifestation there is something you need to understand and there is something you need to engage this is a missing link for many people especially among the Pentecostal charismatic circles so we just leave everything to God and say don't worry or at best we believe the only thing we should do is just to speak I believe in speaking the word but if the only thing you do in terms of destiny actualization is speaking the word you may live a painful Christian experience laced with all kinds of disappointments because speaking is not the only thing you are mandated to do there are actions of obedience based on what scripture has given us and based on the Rima word that comes by the Spirit as a unique strategy for you if the nation of Israel kept shouting before Jericho in the name of Jesus Jericho you must go down they would have died for nothing beyond speaking a strategy was given to them and they walked in obedience and that's what brought Jericho down listen to me I want to challenge you I have seen this in my visions and the Word of God confirms it there are there is an onslaught of wicked spirits being released in this end time over ministries over men of God over families Walking in spiritual ignorance will be a costly bargain in this end time. Hallelujah. Yeah. So Satan sees that that lady, that gentleman will rise to become the horn that exalts the family. All of a sudden leads to the next one. You will start seeing mysterious sicknesses. Have you seen people with all due respect who were say AA? All of a sudden they now find out that they were SS for instance. And they cannot explain where that came from or you find someone who has been healthy living a responsible life and the next thing they say you are having HIV HIV from where sorry you are having HIV that's the end of discussion or someone just begins to feel pain side of your chest anywhere and then it's it looks like child's play until they tell you sorry from what we are seeing you've been having cancer in the last three years cancer where did it come from I eat healthy I've done my best ladies and gentlemen this is more than a health issue there are spirits their assignment is to take you out of the way for the sake of those who will be blessed by your life but again I'm praying for somebody in the name of Jesus you came for koinonia tonight if there is any sickness in your body whether you have detected it or not that is growing to become any blood disease or any cancerous statement in your life as sickness you are a man and it looks like a large prostrate is growing to become cancer or cancer breast cancer lung cancer I don't care what it is called I curse it now in the name of Jesus I curse it now in the name of Jesus please sit down I told you a story here years ago this happened in Zaria true story a woman who was pregnant and in her dream she would always see like monkeys true story come you know to molest her and all of that and she just shrugged it over true story she had a stillbirth as she gave out gave birth to a hairy child looking physically like monkeys ministry is like medicine you will see all kinds of things that you would not have believed except that it is right before you i have seen a woman who got pregnant her husband had died oh she got pregnant because a spirit came to molest her and physically she started getting pregnant and you see as a man of God all those problems is you they bring it to everybody just runs to you and say look just know what to do with me because this one is a spirit don't get into end time ministry if you don't have power you will make a mockery of yourself your family and the name of Jesus are we together now yeah let's talk about sicknesses and disease I have taught you koinonia that sickness is an, a gradual administration of death 
upon a person now the way God designed his system let me repeat for your understanding is that everybody is given the privilege of one body per lifetime please do not forget this we are given the privilege of one body to host your spirit per lifetime lifetime meaning the period from when you are born until you finally transit out of this realm you are given the liberty to have one body per lifetime and maintaining that body is important for your longevity are we together now yes and one of the commonest ways that satan takes people out of this realm before their time knowing the laws that god created around living is that he afflicts your body listen please so that your body deteriorates now there is a certain health requirement for your spirit to remain in your body when your body deteriorates beyond that point your spirit will have to leave whether you are done with your assignment or not so when satan sees that this person it looks like there's nothing we can do with that person sickness comes into your body and what happens is that it starts to deteriorate your body and it gets to a point where your body can no longer host your spirit and at that point you will have to leave hallelujah this is what happened to the man elisha even though he was an anointed man of God, you will think as anointed as Elisha was, a man who could heal anything, he died of sickness. It was sickness that killed him and the anointing was still in him. And that anointing was there in the bones and it raised the dead body back to life. Yet it killed the one, the one who had it could not benefit from it because there are rules of engagement. Are we together? They were bringing a dead body and the dead body fell and touched the bones of Elisha and jacked back to life. What a miracle. And yet the person, the owner of that body became sick until he died. Can I tell you this? If you entertain sickness in your body, it will bring you untimely death. Believe me, Satan is a stubborn spirit. If he administers a dimension of sickness and you give flimsy excuses around it and don't deal with it. When you are dealing with sickness, use every scriptural means to deal with it. The bam in Gilead, the power of the Holy Ghost, attack it every... That is why I will never teach you to ignore medicine. I believe in the supernatural. I will administer the supernatural till the day I see his face. But I am a responsible man of God and I will not teach people to ignore medicine. If your faith has not grown to a level where the power of God becomes active to keep you strong, do not feel guilty. Take responsibility and see a doctor. Come for koinonia and we pray for you while we all keep growing. Are we together now? That is responsible Christianity. Many Christians in a bid to practice faith without guidance and with wisdom have deteriorated their health in a way that it could be managed simple things that, and satan is an opportunist the moment he sees a loophole are we together now for one year you've been having severe pain around the heart doesn't matter what i just know plus jesus might not satan careless christian experience and many people embrace it that way until they tell you, ah, if you had come two years ago, would have been able to work on this. You've been having internal bleeding for years. You've not cared to check it. It is your responsibility to work in partnership with the word of God, to work in partnership with the wisdom of the spirit, to keep this body healthy enough for your spirit to remain comfortable as you serve God. Are we together now? Years ago, someone sent a text that he saw me dying. He said, my friend, please get out of my way with all that kind of revelation. Is it easy like that to die? Hallelujah. Many people say, I shall not die, but leave. They are already on their way to the grave because they do not know what it takes to make prophecy 
become manifestation. The person who is saying, I shall not die, is dishonoring every parent, dishonoring every father, dishonoring everyone. The person who is saying, I shall not die but live, is eating anything he finds in front of him, even when he needs to or not. The person who is saying, I shall not die, is not serving the purposes of God. You are on your way dying for sure. You see that now? There are many scriptures that are connected to longevity, freedom, liberty from sickness. One is, I shall not die, but live and declare. That means if your life is not advancing the kingdom, you will be a victim in this end time. It's not a threat, it's a truth. Ah, there are people that God will not allow to die. His jealousy will defend them. They are too useful for his program. Too useful for his program. Hezekiah turned his face and said, God, you want to kill me? Remember, who will fund your project? Who will bring glory to your name? How many of us can stand and look at the spirit of death to the face and look at God who is the judge of all the earth and say, Lord, remember my work in Koinonia. Remember my partnership. Remember my giving. Rem how many people pray for apostles? Remember, it's a project. Show me a man who is doggedly involved in the program of God. I show you somebody who the devil will be forced to stay far from. Claiming blessings without the conditions connected to them is what will keep making a mockery of people. Are we together? I can tell you there are people who the God will never allow the devil take their lives. Many children eat because they are alive. Many people go to school because they are alive. There are many preachers today who are comforted and have left the way of compromise, courtesy, their help and their partnership. No devil will take them out of the way. Hallelujah. I shall not die, but live and declare. Number two, it says, honor your father and your mother in the Lord. Is that in your Bible? That it may be well with you and that you may live long. There are many people who will stand and look at their parents to their face, insult them, insult every man of God, and they don't know they are programming death. They think they are expressing themselves. And before you know it, you are dividing your years times two. And the person gets up one morning and then he just says, a bike man just killed me. No, sir. All these things you call coincidences, there are no coincidences in the spirit. Is a product of intentional programmings. As for me, I've made up my mind that in the name of Jesus, when my assignment is done, I will not die the kind of death that brings reproach to the name of the Lord. With all due respect to those who have done, who have gone, I honor them. Thank God they made heaven. But me, I've chosen the template of my own life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Believe it. Don't serve God in fear and live a defeated life. Ah, this body will not carry cancer in the name of Jesus. This body will not carry, I don't know whatever name it is called, but by the power that raised Christ from the dead, if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in this body, I decree and declare, I will weary every devil and everything. This body must cause my spirit for my lifetime as appointed by God. Hallelujah. Do you believe what you are hearing tonight? There are many preachers who have not taken out time to meditate on divine health, to meditate on long life. Let me give you a counsel. If you are a man of God and you've not sat down to meditate on these things, please do so. If not, your schedules will be the very reason you will go to the grave. Hallelujah. We've had roller coaster meetings from Enugu to Lagos to Abelkuta to Lagos and back here. After service, seeing people and doing a lot of things. You keep doing, you cannot fake this thing, oh. If this grace is not at work in you, one day you will just wake up and see that you are either in ICU or maybe you are just before the throne. And it's not like it's a vision, you are gone. Say amen. Hallelujah. You make up your mind 
intentionally. You don't say I shall not die because you are afraid. No, we are already victorious. If Jesus comes today to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. The advocacy for long life and health is not because of the fear of death. It is because there is much to be done for the kingdom and you require your body to host your spirit. Are we together now? Say I shall not die. Don't keep quiet. Oh, say I shall not die. In the name of Jesus Christ. You come from a family where the devil kills people with all due respect, people died before their time. I like you this night while you are listening to me. Make get, let a holy anger rise in your spirit that it will be from me. This untimely death, this spirit that comes upon people and just waste their life. There are those the moment they are getting to 46, 47, 48, they start becoming afraid, moody and emotional. Because when you cross 50 from those families, that is even a testimony. Hallelujah. He gave them power. Gave them power. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good and healing all. They that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. Give it to us please. And when he had called unto him the 12 disciples, he gave them power power against are you seeing the pattern now unclean spirits to cast them out then to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases he sent them with a message verse 7 as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand prove the reality of that kingdom verse 8 by healing the sick cleansing the lepers raising the dead cast out um, cast out devils freely you have received freely give when you read from verse 9 the next thing is talking about supplies it's always been in that order you deal with spirits your body i'm coming to the issue of supplies but my assignment is to speak to the body of christ there is a a need for a heightened awareness of the principles that truly make for health and longevity may God forbid that you wake up one morning and just find out that somebody you loved has gone I know that most of us here we've lost loved ones no problem there's nothing we can do we thank God that they are in Christ but since you are alive you have a chance now to define your reality do you know there are people right now who based on the satanic programming they are not supposed to see December 31st they are alive oh, they are already working now but they are part of the list from now till December this one let's try accident if it does not work try a satanic migraine headache oh this one is pregnant she's getting to nine months can we use it as an opportunity this had delivery now this can be an opportunity to kill her and the spirit scheme it and that's why the bible said no weapon fashioned weapons are fashioned they are fashioned by studying your life this man is a man of god most likely he will be laying hands on a lot of people can we program people with communicable diseases so that as he's laying hands something will come upon him and kill him this man is a businessman the easiest way to kill him is to make him lose 10 billion naira within one month what do you think from there he will plunge into depression he may run to a herbalist and on his way coming back both him and the goat he carried will die on the way that's the plan are we together yeah. and while all that scheming is happening and these spirits are planning from the realm of the spirit all they hear is a sound like thunder Shabakatoskiata, Rusiata. ah you are there in your room oh. you are there in your room listen jesus was not invited to hell he entered oh it's in your bible 
Nobody gave him any invitation. The Bible says he showed up. He just said it is finished. And the next thing they see him there, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them in it. Listen, one of these days, you will find yourself in a meeting where you need to settle some things. You will start praying on earth till you find yourself in the realm of the spirit. And you will see books with the names of your loved ones. And you will tear them into pieces and say, this is what has kept this family bound. This is what has destroyed this family. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Listen, the Bible says to deliver those who have been appointed unto death. A man of God once shared a testimony and I shared it here. I listened to him. He said somebody was supposed to take a flight. He missed the flight and the person was angry. He now joined a train and the train crashed. The flight too crashed. You see that these kinds of people have been appointed unto death. Whether it's bike, whether whatever the devil. There are people the devil does not want them to backslide. He wants them to die. That even in their backsliding states, they are too useful to God's program. He wants to get them out of the way. Ah, minus you, Koinonia. I said minus you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I've seen the spirit of death. Oh. I'm not just talking stories. The basis of my confidence is not my visions. It's the authority of scripture. But you cannot deny what you see. I think most believers are really, really careless. They just sit down and fold their arms. You are watching the devil destroy people. You are seeing your children become something that is... And you are not fasting yet. You are not praying yet. You are busy trying to make money. And then the devil will use the same children and kill you. No way. Make up your mind that anything under... I'm going to be showing you the weapons to use before we pray. I won't leave you like this in limbo. I'm just showing you that God is mandating the church to rise to a heightened revelation about dominion over unclean spirits. These spirits that stand in the highway, I hope you know that a major part of accidents are caused by spirits. I have prayed for people who were driving. They were not careless. The steering locked. It, they would tell you they were not careless. They were not drunk. They were driving and the next thing, the steering locked. They tried to press the brake. It was not there. You will know that there are spirits. You must die. Hallelujah. With all due respect to medicine, how about doctors that have made costly mistakes on patients' bodies? Some of them were not born again and they were simply medical practitioners. Except that when a spirit arrived at theater, he also contributed in the surgery and manipulated their hands. Something that should be a basis for healing now scattered the patient's body. This is why we need people to be born again, regardless what you do. A business can, man can be on fire. It's one thing to know how to buy and sell. It's one thing to put a mall as big as this auditorium. Then one mysterious fire in the name of one wire sparking burns everything. And you, as intelligent as you are, you actually believe that that fire was a product of a spark. It's a joke. God gave us brains and intents that we use them. Spirits are real. Their effect can be felt in the earth realm. Again, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, every spirit assigned to your destiny, to your ministry, to your family, to bring shame and reproach in this end time. We raise a standard by the blood. 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 Please sit down. Hallelujah. 
I will only say it because it's something that has been discussed. I've shared it with the workers. When we started meetings here, about a month after then, the officials here were going around this facility and when they went outside, they saw something hanging in a leather. And they thought, who is it that just threw this thing there? And the next thing, they picked it up and brought it and it was a charm. Well concocted charm. Only God knows what the charm was supposed to do. Destroy Koinonia, destroy Apostle Joshua Selma. Even a madman does not enter fire by mistake. As, as mad as a man is, if he comes near fire, he has the sanity enough to know that fire destroys. I don't say these kinds of things with any apology. Oh. Let me tell you, the individual and the spirit that tries this ministry dies on the spot as a testimony. On the spot. And you believe I'm joking, try it so that your life will be a lesson for others. I didn't say one week later on the spot listen I have seen spirits I've seen Jesus something happens to you there are things when you have seen you know how many charms this hand has held I'm not bragging I've shared with you my story people carry charms charms that are for families charms older than even my parents and I say, bring it to me. I know what to do. You go, you are free. Just leave me and the devil. Listen, I submit to you, and I'm sorry if I sound proud, but there are, God gave gifts to men. Are we together? No matter how mad, listen, we have we've been in just where there was crisis crisis if his death i would have died in zaria for years for many of you who know zaria there's no kind of crisis that has happened there that we're not there in a whole you understand what i'm saying there is a way god trains you you do not fear again anybody that plants anything around your life and if I be a man of God in the name of Jesus Christ beginning from this night both them and the charm the earth will bury them hallelujah be sensitive oh be sensitive about what God is doing. I just sense that God is settling. Tonight is a miracle service. God has just decided that it's a miracle service. For as long, listen, for as long as you pamper the devil and you keep quiet, you will watch him destroy your children, destroy your reputation. Listen, there are people today by God's mandate on their life, they should not be this way, but they kept folding their arms. You know the kind of family you are coming from. It is true that victory has been wrought in Christ, but there is a responsibility component. Don't keep watching the ladies in the family go down. All your siblings have gone down. You are still watching. The gentlemen, they travel abroad and return back like failures and losers. Even those who accepted the call to ministry, you look at them and it's as if they are fake. Say, Father. Father. One more time. Say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over every influence, every spirit assigned to my life and to my destiny. I stand in the victory of Christ and I establish it in my life. Open your mouth in one minute and pray. Kate bakatos keta, krate kete bakatos ka prande ka parekosiata. Shati bakatos keta prande ka parusiata. Establishing victory through understanding, establishing victory by faith, 
establishing victory by spiritual intelligence. Pray. Hebra poskete brati kapariata. Embregete katosko to brekete valiata. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Let me give you one more prayer point. Say, Father, every member of my family who is in bondage now, I stand as a priest. I stand as an intercessor. And I declare by the blood of Jesus, they are released now. Open your mouth and start praying. Every member, pray for your children. Pray for your spouse. Not under your watch. In the name of Jesus. By the blood, release them. Release them by the blood in the name of Jesus. Release them by the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I give you one more before you sit down? Say, Father, I declare that the fullness of my days I will fulfill every assignment of hell to take my life before my time, to take the life of my loved ones before their time is hereby cancelled. Open your mouth and pray. The fullness of our days. The fullness of our days. This is the heritage of the saints in light. Please don't be silent. Decree that he might just be justified. In the air, protected. On land, protected. By sea, protected. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Have you noticed that in recent time over this city, there has been some demonic onslaught of people getting into vehicles? Huh? Have you had someone that it happened to? That someone just, and ah, I'm angry, my spirit. Hear me. I say this as one sent by God. Any kidnapper or any driver, one chance they call it or whatever it's called, in the name of Jesus Christ, that anyone who will pick any son or daughter of Zion, may my God judge them instantly. May my God judge them instantly. May the earth fight them instantly. Listen, listen, this is what happens in a territory when the saints are lazy. You will think that these boys that are picking people and collecting phones and collect, it happens in every society, you see. But have you noticed that there are seasons where it's like a pattern? It's like a satanic grace just comes on people, either stealing, either irresponsibility. The young people are not the ones, it is a spirit taking advantage of their partnership with hell. Many families cannot have peace and all of that because of some kind of satanic thing. Anybody that nears your loved ones in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying by the power of the Holy Spirit, may my God judge them. And if there is any loved one who has been kidnapped now, wherever they are, we set confusion in the camp of the enemy. (laughs) 
Hallelujah. Please sit down. Can I tell you? You have a child that is still within the age of correction and is misbehaving, insulting people, slapping visitors. Don't sit down and say he's only a child. Call him and lay your hands on him and say, not under my watch. I curse that spirit of rebellion. That is only a sample of what he will do to you if you keep quiet and keep watching him. In the name of Jesus, that you are praying in the spirit, authority over unclean spirits, authority over sicknesses and diseases. I'm saying this thing because it is one of the things I'm praying that we do not start hearing news of people people you love and admire and they say this person just went down mysterious sickness that has no name he survived by this great person just went down when God brings a prophetic word is not to bring fear it is to build you up so that you can stand strong are we together the last area is dominion over resources 2nd Corinthians 9 8 Please allow me cast something out of your life and destiny this night. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye always, say always. always. One more time, say always. always. Having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. Please look at me believers. One of the major ways that Satan attacks the saints is in the area of access to supplies, access to resources. The most distracting aspect of the believer's life proven by history is the area of finances and the frustration that comes because of their inability to get needs done. Do you know I submit to you and, I'm, and many people here are servants of the living God, men and women of God. There are men of God today who cannot even have the breathing space to prepare sermons and bless God's people because you get to the table, your Bible is on that same table and there are bills and you have to think, how do I raise this money? And the devil will suggest, gather the people and manipulate them. Tell them lies. Do something so that you can meet these bills. How do you pay for the bills? You see that? One of the number one sponsor of compromise among believers is the absence of sufficiency. I hate to just use the word finance because most people would think we're just talking about money. To be incapacitated, economically speaking, is a dangerous thing. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. With all humility and by the grace of God, I can tell you that the reason why you are comfortably seated receiving the word of God and you can guarantee that nobody will manipulate you and try to take advantage of you is not just because of the anointing. It's that by the grace and the help of God, there is sufficiency to be able to get the work of God done so that integrity can be maintained. Integrity is a function of many factors. The will to live a life of integrity is only one. The means to support your desire to walk in integrity must also be there. There are many people today who pray in tongues in church, but when bribe comes, they will collect. It's not because they are bad. They have children in school. Are we together now? Yes. It's only God that knows what people do for finances and come to church and wear the sanctimonious garment and say, Lord, we thank you. Lack and insufficiency is a curse. Let me repeat it so that you will hear. Lack and insufficiency is a curse. I'm saying it as a man of God. Lack and insufficiency is a curse. A curse that affects your mind, not your account. Hallelujah. I know what it means to be in a position where you are incapacitated financially and you are under pressure. The, one of the major causes, statistics will tell us, of the high blood pressure of many men right now is economic issues. They sit down and they watch their children. They just lost their job, downsized them. Madame is not doing anything. And here are four or five or six children. And you know how it is in Africa, plus relatives who have now come, who are staying with you. And all that is on you. And you find people talking to themselves. 
driving and talking to themselves till they hit a tree without knowing. That's what depression and frustration is doing, including preachers. Some of this anger you see with preachers on stage is financial that, that causes it. People just come on stage and lash out on, on everybody and you are wondering, what did I do? I only came to church to hear the gospel because there are pills. For as long as I live, nobody will manipulate you in this ministry on economic ground, no. When it's time to give, we'll challenge you to give and present it to you in truth. But we fear God too much. But you see, you cannot make a statement like this with an empty account. It's a lie. Just believe me. Whether you believe it or not is the truth. Most people have no idea, and I say this with every sense of humility and responsibility, what it takes to run one koinonia service. You've heard me say it. It's what many people use for conferences. One koinonia service. Hallelujah. You have to be empowered in this end time. If not one day, you will not know when you will carry your own children by yourself and say, please, sell this child and bring the money. And don't you say, God forbid, ask the two women in the Bible. Is it in your Bible that women, do you know what it means for a mother to watch her child and boil the child, the Bible says, and eat the child? What kind of hunger is that? No goats, no cows, no nothing. And you see four people crying, two women and their children, and the mother is looking at the child. The child thinks it's compassion, and the mother is preparing to eat the child. That is to tell you what happens. Look, let me tell you, compromise makes a lot of sense in the presence of desperation. Did you hear what I said? Compromise makes a lot of sense in the presence of desperation. By the time they are throwing your child out, and this child is in his final year and just because of 200,000, 300,000, this child is about to lose his opportunity. You will not know when as a parent, you can simply doctor some, uh, uh, what they call it now, some reports. Your office gives you that privilege and yet your conscience is standing before God. Do I do this? Do I not? One of the ways that God helps men to walk in integrity and righteousness is to grant them access to sufficiency by the Spirit. I have met many sincere people who have been active participants in the world of compromise and they will tell you, Apostle, I'm not a bad person. It is the kind of pressure that is on me. Pressure that is on me. Are we together? Yeah. And if the saints deny this, you have only given Satan a tool to destroy you every time God's people serve his purposes and they begin to muse the idea of an exodus Satan comes to attack them economically look at what happened to Israel in Egypt hallelujah they were there they were given straw but the moment Moses came and started speaking Pharaoh said ah it's because you have straw given to you that's why you even have the time to be thinking of an exodus stop giving them straw the time they are using to pray let them use it do you know there are many families today that cannot call for a retreat as individuals as a couple as a family they don't have that luxury of time because Satan has burdened many family with the yoke of looking for money there are parents with all due respect that never see themselves for days because by the time the other person is sleeping, the other person is already outgoing. They return back in the night. How about young children? I said it, I think a few weeks that I'm teaching. Uh, I was teaching here. A young girl of 18 years old returns back home with 1 million and the parents suspect that this lady must have done something that is not correct, but they cannot rebuke her because they need it. So the lady says, thank God my parents are even backing me. When Koinonia started around this area, this region, I'm still learning the names of some of these regions, but by the time you drive, the first, I remember after the first Koinonia service, I was driving home and I said, what is this? Late in the night, in the, in the heat of revival that was about to start, something was going on around this region. 
Are we together? And don't you think some of those people are demonic people? You have no idea. Some of the parents of those children have been determined to be irresponsible. And those children will tell you, I'm doing this to sponsor my brother. I'm doing this to sponsor my sister. Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. God must help us to get to a point where we understand how to translate the riches of Christ in glory and to make it manifest in our lives. Otherwise, a generation will come that will not call the name of the Lord again because of lack. And this is something Satan has used to cheat the church. On one hand, we have people who have... Uh, advocates of materialism and lust for money the entire discussion is money 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 whether people are born again or not whether they are saved or not whether they love jesus or not whether they are passionate money is what rules everything that is another side of the danger but then there are people who in error and ignorance and even in pride have interrupted god's program in terms of making supplies available it is a big mistake if the church of the lord jesus christ decides to frown at economic empowerment especially through the dignity of kingdom integrity there is a, a relationship between influence and financial supplies you will be a better christian if you can give your children a healthy meal you will be a better christian if you can send them to good schools whose values you are aware of but if you do not have the resources you have to make do with what is there until your child asks you a question as a parent that you will not be able to sleep where did you learn this from and they'll say that's what my teacher taught me but you have no you, you want the child to change two years in that kind of institution and your child has become something else and becomes the reason for your pain until you drop dead how about the financing of the gospel? There are many people today, pastors, missionaries, families who love the Lord with all their heart, but they have been limited financially. Right now, because of what is happening economically, globally, housing rates have increased, you know, money for gas, and there are people who just smile in church and dance. But the truth is that there are people who, some of you are listening to me right now, the one problem is this issue of finance and it has led people to depression no wonder our young people today are getting into money ritual the solution is not just to say stop young people have energy they need to make progress in their lives like I said the last time I will never endorse this evil but just saying stop is, is not the solution they must be shown the kingdom's way by the time a young man is seeing his sick mother the sick father and somebody tells him just go and slaughter one young girl or slaughter one young boy carry their organs to some herbalist and suddenly become a millionaire overnight they will do it and carry the tithe and bring it to church and because we men of God are also incapacitated financially even if God reveals to you that this is blood money you will say I will give thanks and still collect Hallelujah. How many ministers of the gospel finish preaching to God's people and they go back depressed and in pain, wondering, their wives and children asking them, is this, is this what God called you to do? Is this how our lives will be? Simply because you answered the call. You were a doctor, you were an engineer, you were an architect, you were a great man. Is the call to ministry a call to becoming a cause? That's why I made up my mind and I've told you that my first part of call is to make sure you are vibrant spiritually, loving the Lord, growing in character, confirming to the image of Christ. Second is to grant you spiritual intelligence, to understand the kingdom and understand the life of the spirit. Number three is to empower you by the spirit so that you become mighty and robust to do the works of the kingdom. Number four is to reveal purpose for you. That every empowerment and enlightenment that comes to the believer is connected to kingdom come. But finally to see to it that you live a life of decency with dignity. Serving the Lord and living as responsible people while you do so. That is my assignment. And as the Lord keeps me alive, I will not fail in any one of them.
in the name of Jesus Christ. I will never raise a people who will keep stealing from one another in the name of Jesus because of economic problems. People who sit in church and the man is wondering, there are some of you now who have traveled from the end of this city to come and you live there. Not because you cannot get a place closer. You are trusting God and saying, look, if God can help me to get a vehicle for my wife and my children so that it will help me do, do you think that God is so wicked that he will not want to help you on that wise? No. Listen, balanced Christianity must have a decent life represented in the proposition. A life of decency and a life of dignity. I serve Jesus because I love him. I have never served him because of money or fame and I will never. But like I have told you, he has encouraged me today by making sure that there is bread on my table. I can shout like this and see people and stretch myself because if I go home, there is bread, there is tea on my table. And it will be evil of a man of God for me to have bread and tea on my table and not care whether you have it too on your table. Every time people carry seeds to give me, I receive it with gratitude, but sometimes I feel guilty because my assignment is, have I empowered this person enough by the word of God to collect their seeds? I know that you have to collect for people to rise, but I tell you sincerely, sometimes I feel guilty because you see somebody who does not even have anything, but they come with the sincerity of their faith, with the little that they know. Some of them even empty their accounts and say, man of God, I was taught that sacrifice opens the door. How do you become such a heartless person that you just say, hey, bring it all yeah, go, may God help you. Doesn't matter whether the person dies, doesn't matter whether, no, no, no. That is why every service I keep releasing the various graces and supplying the wisdom when I teach on a financial series, I teach it without apology. I teach it to all those who need to know and learn. When I teach on character, when I teach on the spirit life, every aspect of the kingdom that will help the believer to be of stature and to be holistic. Today, by the privilege of God's grace, we can serve God acceptably and we can also extend the hand of blessing to as many. And I am happy and proud for being able to do this for Jesus. Hallelujah. We announced the program that we're doing, I think, first or second week of November. It was a burden that God put in my heart. And we decided to bring in some doctors from John Hopkins Hospital and then a few, you know, here around within the country. And we're doing a two-day program. Number one is for awaiting couples, those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, to bring all these professionals to come and help examine and see what they can do to bring joy to these families and then number two to gather medical practitioners together and then help them to understand best practices some of them may not have the privilege of going to john hopkins hospital but we can bring the people there and see to it that they're going to bring and the lord put it in my heart i'm not saying this to brag hallelujah Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, don't talk about people till you can do two times what they've done once. Hallelujah. By the privilege of God's grace, we are not here to blow trumpets, but to say God has not helped us to do things for his kingdom. Hallelujah. The boreholes, the prisons, the things that have been done, out of these people, we're selecting 20 families that are trusting God and paying full their program for IVF for 20 families to have the opportunity to do that. I made a statement, I think it was in Enugu when I was ministering. If you cannot give, respect those who give. If you are broke, respect those who have helped, God has helped, who have resources and still fear God. Hallelujah. When I was teaching you on relationships here, I said, if you are poor, have character. If you don't have both, you will remain poor forever. If you, don't have, if you are poor, be friendly and respect people. Don't join the bandwagon of ignorant people who have nothing, not making any contribution for the kingdom. Their ten naira will not go out without them having peace. 
Hallelujah. The, the number of children in Koinonia here that by God's grace we have given scholarships and are helping families it's not, it's not to brag but I need to tell you these things happen it takes more than compassion it takes resources our precious school of ministry students I think during my birthday they were, I was so touched when they went to Kujay prison the marvelous things that they did for the people there and all the humanitarian activities the name of Jesus is very heavy it takes resources to lift it up to the nations I've had the honor of watching crying families have their tears wiped in one moment because you were able to help with housing or bread hallelujah there was a situation here not too long ago after service I was attending to people and someone from the medical department came and they brought this wonderful woman who was holding a child this child was almost dying and if I believe that that child would have been managed eventually I got to find out that the child eventually passed on because of the pure living condition that is almost is worse than that which you will give an animal ladies and gentlemen when Jesus walked upon the earth he demonstrated that among the many indices that show true godliness is the ability to be empowered and then to stretch your hands and extend the same perhaps not everybody will be able to or be interested in laying hands on the sick to see them healed perhaps not everybody will be interested in standing apostolically and prophetically to declare liberty over climates and over nations but everybody has a role to play in providing financial resources for kingdom advance do you know the manipulation that happens in church oh please do this do that it is not believers are supposed to be mentored to understand that part of your kingdom responsibility is helping to make financial resources available for kingdom advance in many non-christian practices they teach the people it is part of their kingdom responsibility so when god blesses people they know that among the many things to do with that blessing is to see to it that the program of god finds expression hallelujah let me give you two keys and then we'll pray the two keys from scripture that will help you to establish these three levels of dominion in your life and then other people's lives that are connected to you let me give you the keys there are many but i'll just give you two for tonight are you ready number one is to learn how to receive the wisdom of the spirit in the place of prayer please write it down the first way the first way to convert the things that god has said to be made manifest in your life is to use the weapon of prayer to tap into the wisdom of the spirit and know what you need to do to make that blessing manifest now the bible speaks generally about how to get answers for everything but there are unique instances in our lives whose solutions are not directly written in scripture this is where the wisdom of the spirit comes are we together there is nowhere in scripture where it is written how you should take care of four of your children or how you should heal cancer or how you should attend to your needs the place of prayer listen we pray for many reasons but i am telling you that one of the scriptural strategies end time strategies for believers is to know how to use prayer not just for intercession not just for transformation but prayer as a tool for ascendance that you can use prayer to ascend until you draw the wisdom of the spirit and download it a rhema word from God that you will obey immediately and it will make the word of God to be made manifest many believers study scripture but you do not know that most of the things that you read in scripture were inspired by the Holy Ghost and that same spirit lives in you but you must know how to stir up the operation of the Holy Spirit to reveal to you for instance 
when we're about to start here in Abuja, I've shared it with you and I keep sharing. I was praying. We did not even know where we'll be using for an auditorium, for instance. Now, that is not written in scripture. There is a general guide as to what to do. But now the unique word that provides solution and brings to pass what God has said. And I kept praying in the spirit, Lord, what is the way out? I am frail in myself and in my ability. You are the only one who will help me. And while I kept praying, one day a Rema word came. And the Lord told me, buy the map. Get a, the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the globe. And keep praying on it. Now, it does not make sense, but that is a Rema word. The prophetic word of God is now being converted to the experience. And I went, got it in obedience. And all I kept doing was to pray. In fact, as at the time I was praying, I had not yet even settled if it was Abuja. I was still trying to confirm in my spirit. It was one time I was praying and my eyes were lifted. And I saw just when you are coming towards, I think the stadium road also, that map of Abuja. That was when I saw it. And immediately I knew that this was it. But now, that is step one. How are you now going to begin to make things happen? And then to pray in the name of Jesus. How is this going to happen? Lord reveal to me. Can I tell you this? When you stay in the place of prayer and you stretch in patience, waiting for the Lord, his word will come. When the word of the Lord comes, it comes with a solution for you. For someone, that word can come and God will tell you, call so, 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 I'm so person and just tell him about your needs. Ordinary, that is a failed strategy. But God will tell you and you will speak to the person and the person will say, you know, I was just thinking of someone to bless. How much is it? And you say, sir, I'm even afraid of saying it. He says, say it. It's 10 million. He says, come and collect it tomorrow. And you will kneel down there and say, God, what is this? It is a rema word. Most believers do not know how to stay until they get the strategy that brings prophetic words to come to pass. There are people who, in the place of prayer, God will tell you, go and get a bottle of water as a rema word and take it while you are praying. That will be the cure of that sickness. It may not make sense, but it's a rema word for you. It's not a ritual to now start sharing for everybody. It's not a doctrine, but it has come as a rema word. You will carry that water and just take, and that is the end of it. That destructive sickness will never plague you again. There are others, God will say, wake up by 12 in the night. Just walk around your living room. Sing praises. Just sing praises. And you will get up by 12. You are still feeling the pain. But because he said so, you will be singing praises like a madman. Sometimes as a businessman, all doors have closed. You have done everything you need to know and to do. And you will just be singing praises to the Lord. And while you are singing praises, the pain goes. Never to return. Or while you are singing the praises, an email will come. An alert will come. You see that now. It was in the place of prayer that God brought the word for the sound of revival that we did in UK. It was in the place of prayer. I knew that it was time we we're stepping into a season where we are now taking the kingdom and the power of God across the globe. But to guess how you would do it, you can fail as if God did not speak to you. There are many people, what you are doing is a wrong strategy, but the goal is genuine. God actually told you that this is what you would do. But you did not stay to get the strategy. You just assumed that just because God said feed the hungry and you carry money and before you know it you are broke. Or God said you are a man of God, you just assume that it's to start a church and you don't have the bills nor the people to come and listen to you. The first key that converts the prophetic speakings of God, you want dominion over spirits, dominion over sicknesses and diseases dominion over limitations economically speaking you must learn to invest in the place of prayer for the purpose of tapping into the wisdom of the spirit that is how i prepare some of the sermons that come of course there is a principle for preparing sermons but i take out time and pray and god is at liberty to interrupt my schedule and interrupt any series we may be ongoing with to be able to reveal after all we are all his people and he is the lord over the ministry 
We are organized people, but not at the expense of the prophetic speakings of God. He has liberty to interrupt at any time and bring forth that which is needed in the season. Hallelujah. Yes. So they come to Jesus and say, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act of it. The issue was not the woman. The issue was to find a way of discrediting him. And he keeps quiet and is writing. And he looks at them. Wisdom. He who does not have sin among you, cast the first stone. And that was the end of it. How about his healing? There were some that he spat on the ground and made spittle out of it. Put it on their eyes and said, go and wash in the pool called Siloam. There were others he spoke to them, laid hands. There were others he made a decree. He even though he knew that he was God was with him and it was in his destiny to heal the sick. He had to wait for every rhema word. Do you see? This is the difference between our generation and the generation of our fathers. Most of them were not very educated, but they will wait till God speaks. They will never take careless steps. Our generation is quite intellectual and in need sometimes we just ignore the place of the voice of God. Should I pursue, oh God? I know it is in my destiny to get to the promised land, but how am I going to defeat them? And you sit down and begin to pray. You are singing songs of worship and sometimes in the midst of that prayer you will fall asleep. It's not slumber. Is God putting you to sleep and you will have a prophetic dream and out of that dream will come the solution for the next level hallelujah you believe what I'm sharing with you so every believer who wants to be part of this dominion campaign over spirits over infirmities and over financial bankruptcy must know how to pray to tap into the wisdom of the spirit sometimes you are studying and you are praying and the holy spirit will lead you to a property that does not make sense and say just buy that land and leave it there you buy that land two weeks later someone else will come and they will want to buy it, even if it's ten times more they will say we need it wisdom hallelujah some of you sometimes the spirit of god will just speak to you and say you know what send a text to this person and just greet the person don't talk about money don't talk about a need and the holy spirit will say you just obey because it came in the place of prayer you see you just send a text and the person looks at you and says how are you i hope you are doing well and you say well not exactly well what is the issue i've been struggling for my rent and it's okay you know what for the next four years i will be paying your rent send me your account number and that's it simple instruction it came by the wisdom of god someone will look at your life and see that you may not have a job as it were but you are excelling in a way that they cannot understand is because you have learned how to pray listen we are a very busy people especially within the context of today's world but let me plead and beckon on you those who will be champions in the spirit in this end time are people who can stay away and take some time when you pray and get direction then you can take action taking action in ignorance or disobedience will only recycle pain there are men of god you have to stop don't just assume that because everybody is doing conferences i must do it too everybody is doing this there are people today who went to do charity and they became poor because they did not ask from god to get direction they carried all their money home and abroad and went to do charity and went down not to rise up again. When God speaks, there is honor that follows his word. When God speaks, there is power that backs what he says. Can I tell you, except it is not the God of heaven speaking, when he speaks, you can trust what he says. Let me give you number two. Is someone learning? We must become people of prayer. There are many believers who pray but they do not pray with the consciousness of tapping into the wisdom of the spirit. You can pray for transformation. You can pray for warfare. But there are times you can pray and imagine a man climbing a ladder while you are praying. You are ascending to the spirit, bringing your ears closer to the heart of God by the spirit. Then his word comes. No, do not do it this way. Do it this way. Do not do it this way. Do it this way. 
Oh, you are taking this step. Hold on. Do it this way. And you obey God with childlike faith and you return back with extraordinary results. The people that you see that look invincible, they are not necessarily extraordinary in themselves. They have just learned how to wait until he speaks. Hallelujah. The second key I will give you now and then we'll wrap up. You want to step into this dominion. It's going to happen when you honor the people who God has placed this grace upon and that you can receive genuinely through hunger, through service and through honor. Please listen to this as we wrap up. There are dimensions in the spirit in as much as Christ died to make it available. The administration of those graces depend on transference of mantles and graces from the carriers of this grace to those who need them. Please believe me. There are people today who embody the grace for wealth and abundance not by making empty noise. It is a grace God gave them. There are people today who God has placed his hand upon them. Unusual understanding into the realm of the spirit and how to administer victory over unclean spirits. You will never tap into that grace dishonoring these vessels. It is the reason why we advocate honor. You see the reason why many people remain incapacitated because generally it's almost become a fashion to criticize areas that you do not see working in your life. I don't know where we got that satanic campaign, but I pray that that thing leaves the body of Christ. That when people find out that there is an area they are not stepping into, they downplay it, they demean it. So you see someone talking and x-raying the issue of unclean spirits and talking with authority and that person cannot cast out a single spirit and liberate families. Empty talk without the grace for performance. How about those who criticize? There are people who have the F1 tree to criticize men like Benny Hinn and shout over people and then you find out that they do not have the grace to heal even a common headache. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, let me teach you this. You will never step into a dimension of grace you dishonor. It's a principle that you must learn. The moment you make it as part of your life to dishonor the body, dishonor fathers, dishonor carriers of this grace. I'm not teaching human worship. And sometimes I know that we men of God have found ourselves victims of subjugating people because of the little grace that God has given. That in itself is wrong. However, anointing answers to honor. Anointing answers to genuine honor. You can honor your way into realms where you access graces that can put you in charge indeed. And part of what you're about to receive shortly is prayer to impart that grace upon your life. I remember many years ago, I used to see people pray and cast out devils and it was, it was like I was watching a movie. What in the world is this? What sort of authority is this? How do you command spirits to exit the lives and the destinies of people? In my ignorance and limited knowledge, I made up my mind from my spirit and seen from scripture that I would step into this grace. There has to be that understanding that releases that authority. How about sicknesses and diseases? I would watch Benny Hinn, T.L. Osborne, Charles and Francis Hunter, these mighty men, and you see their meetings, you think they are joking until they make declarations and you see all manner of healings. Rain had bunker and I said, come on God, You're, the same Lord is rich unto all. There has to be something. This healing anointing is real. Where is it? Lord, bring it within my reach. I remember buying the videos of Charles and Francis Hunter, buying their books, T.L. Osborne's books, Benny Hinn, because I could not access them directly, but I said I will honor their materials and I will keep it side by side with scripture. And then when it had to do with the grace for favor, I initially kept looking at the grace for prosperity, but I found that prosperity was a subset of favor. You can have money without favor, but it's impossible to have the favor of God upon your life and be bankrupt economically. 
and I searched for people when I found people like Dr. Mike Modok I camped around their teachings and said Lord whatever grace you placed upon this man there has to be a way out these are people who God has helped Kenneth Copeland God helped them I said no we have to camp around these things When this grace comes on you, you know it has arrived. You truly know it has arrived. Graces are transferable. That's why nobody needs to remain in that low level. We may not all be at the same level per time, but everybody can enter a level that makes your Christian experience a delight to behold. Hallelujah. And in the next few minutes, I want to pray over your life. Many of you will be surprised that by reason of this impartation, you will go back home and they will tell you that someone has been manifesting under the influence of spirits. You will stand and you will think it's a joke. You will say in the name of Jesus and watch those devils leave in a moment never to return. And then you will see doors open over your family members. They will call you pastor and you say, I'm not a pastor. They say, that's, that's none of our business. Whoever can cast out a devil like this is our pastor. How about sickness? There are some of you who will carry these hands that you see God has given you. It's not just for eating. You will carry these hands and lay it upon people and watch with wonder, growths, satanic manifestations in their bodies will just dry up like that. And they will ask you what happened. And you will tell them it's true that God gives gifts to men. God can give gifts to men. God can empower men. And then some of you, when the grace for favor rests upon your life, I heard one of our dear sisters who was testifying here, you will marvel and wonder. It does not take long for this to happen. You will see God moving in your life in a way that will surprise you. Ideas you did not think of, downloaded in your spirit, strategies by the spirit on what to do and what not to do. All it be by the spirit. I want you to rise in one minute and you are going to pray one prayer and then I pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I open up my heart and I open up my spirit to receive the impartation that positions me to manifest this kingdom authority even within this end time. I want to be an effective battle axe. I want to be an effective believer. Not just one who comes to receive in church, but one who, one who becomes an extension of that power. Go ahead and pray. Once upon a time, the disciples could not cast out spirits. Once upon a time, the disciples could not pray for the sick. Once upon a time, they could not enjoy and experience the blessings of the Lord, but something came upon them. Go ahead and pray. Take a minute to pray, ladies and gentlemen. A global family connecting from across the globe. This is what God wants to do in this season. Dominion over unclean spirits. Bringing liberty to men, ministering the spirit, releasing families, releasing captives, dominion over sicknesses, diseases, infirmity, death, dominion over economic financial limitations that have plagued the body of Christ. Someone pray. Hallelujah. 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 Pray.
Hallelujah. Please look up. Is it possible to truly walk in the experience of authority over unclean spirits? Yes. Do you have to be a man of God to access that privilege? In terms of ministry? No. In terms of knowing God? Yes. Can you have authority over sickness, disease, untimely death? Yes, sir. Is there a grace that can enhance that reality? Yes, sir. Can you walk in favor that elemental forces within your territory are compelled to bow and deliver its riches to you? Yes, sir. Is there a grace that controls that possibility? Yes, sir. Can men receive it? Yes. Can it be made manifest here and now? Yes, sir. I'm saying that because this is what you are about to receive. So open up your spirit as I pray for you and then we wrap up the service. Father, you have placed this prophetic word in my heart for the body of Christ that there is a need to come into a higher spiritual understanding and then to access the requisite grace. I'm praying right now for a man of God here. I'm praying right now for a businessman here. I'm praying for a prophet, an apostle, an evangelist, a pastor following from some nation where your life has been barren of the experience of what the word says should be as a result of the finished work of Christ. I decree and declare authority over unclean spirits receive that grace right now receive that grace right now receive that grace right now that from tonight in the name of Jesus you will not have to bring them to Joshua Selman that you will stand as a priest that you are and make declarations and this grace will speak for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, in the name of Jesus, I first pray for you. The sickness that will kill you, may it never come near your body. The sickness that will deteriorate your organs, may it never come near your destiny. And if there is anyone under the sound of my voice, who is having any planting in their body that is not by my God, I command it to jump out of your life. With these anointed hands, may you go back and lay them on the sick and watch mighty miracles happen by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, and finally for tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, the grace that quickens your mind, then quickens your hand, then draws men to you to make for supplies in your life. In the name of Jesus, I place that grace on your head. I place that grace on your head. I speak to every financial bill that may be depressing you, that is not giving you peace, you are not able to sleep because there are needs that must be met. This week, I stand by the prophetic and the apostolic. May my God raise strange help for you. May my God raise strange help for you. In the name of Jesus, hear me. Anyone here who may have lost in business, you've lost money, you've lost clients, you've lost opportunity, in the name of Jesus, I place a grace on you. Go back and excel. For the sake of his name and for the sake of his kingdom, go back and excel. And there are many of you here, while you sleep in the night, the spirit of wisdom will come to you and open you up to strange strategies that makes for your rising in the name of Jesus Christ. Koinonia, hear me. 
nobody under the sound of my voice will die before their time nobody under the sound of my voice will have to live their life begging for tea and prayer every family here that is going through any kind of limitation in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I am praying let my God arise and help you and finally any human agent who has been ordained by God to help you and support you as you rise they may have forgotten you they may have been ill advised against you but I'm praying this week may my God use them to bring his word to pass in your life in the name of Jesus Christ therefore my dear people walk in this consciousness don't just share the grace and leave. Walk in this consciousness that I am anointed. Walk in this consciousness that I am God's battle axe. Walk in this consciousness that many destinies depend on me. Walk in this consciousness that I have received something that I must put to work. And as you do that, you will see the God of wonder surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ.